there significant biological differences between men and women, outside of sex organs, that is? When I was in college, I was taught it's unacceptable to say that. Feminist professors taught me men and women are biologically the same, and it's only because of sexist society, parents and peers encouraging boys to play with guns, girls to play with dolls, that causes boys and girls to behave differently. If we just stopped doing that, there would soon be equal numbers of female race car drivers and male ballet dancers. And I believed that. I really did until I had children and woke up and then did a report at ABC News that got me into trouble. I, I said, look, boys and girls are just not the same. Ooh, uh -oh. <laughs> we treated them the same, but they were just so different. I don't just mean my kids. You'd see it in their friends, too. The girls were, well, more civilized. They'd look you in the eye, talk to you. They cared about your feelings. The boys, well, the boys wanted to go to war. The girls cared more about playing with each other, talking, cooperating. You'll be the princess. There were plenty of exceptions, of course, but the pattern was clear. No matter how sex neutral we parents tried to be, it just seemed obvious to me that boys and girls' instincts are somehow different. And the author of The Power of the Female Brain agrees with that. That's neuroscientist Dr. Daniel Amen. And Dr. Amen, you conducted the biggest brain study ever done, 46,000 brain scans, and found what? Female brains were dramatically more active in about 85% of the brain. Women are really wired for leadership. And if you look at um, the homes and you look at organizations like churches, they're often the leaders. They're clearly the health leaders. Uh, and if it wasn't for this thing called children that derails their careers, that they really make great CEOs. Women um, in our studies, and also I point this out in the book, they're better with things like empathy, intuition, collaboration, self-control. In fact, women go to jail 14 times less than males. And what many people wouldn't think of as a strength that I think is totally a strength is they have appropriate worry. The don't worry, be happy people, more often men on motorcycles, die the earliest from accidents or preventable illnesses. And this so, is just wired in into many our ways, brains. This is not about parenting. It's wired in, into your brain. That when um, little boys are exposed to testosterone and girls aren't, it, there's reshaping or remodeling that happens, and it happens very early uh, inside your mother's womb. At conception, we begin as the same clump of cells, except for the Y chromosome, which we guys have, and that causes hormones to be added to the clump of cells, and these make men's brains different. Right. So whether you have the Y chromosome or you don't, triggers testosterone or not nearly as much. And the level of testosterone you had in utero begins to shape your brain in a certain way. And changes you forever? Well, it certainly makes a big difference. But what's interesting is that if women take testosterone, and that's happening more and more, that if they take too much, they begin to think like a guy. They always think about sex. They have less empathy. <laughs> and it can cause some trouble. They, they ride motorcycles. Now, I, I, I want to poll my audience here. How, how many of you have a good sense of direction? More guys I'm seeing raising their hand than women, and that's my experience. And look at these two experiments that I reported on for my Sex Difference show. This first one was done at the University of Rochester. Students are blindfolded and then walk through the maze of tunnels that run underneath the campus. The experimenter stays behind them and guides them with a tap on the shoulder so they don't run into anybody. When the women are asked where a college building is... Can you tell me where Wilson Commons is? 
They're not so sure. That way. Men, however, retained a sense of what direction they'd moved. Go through the next doors, take a left, then a right, then a left. And so on. In another experiment, this one at York University in Toronto, students were asked to wait in a cluttered room while an experimenter got something ready. What the student didn't know was that waiting was the whole experiment because they were then asked this. Tell me every object in that room that you can remember. Women typically give answers like this. On the right-hand side of the desk right here was a briefcase with your initials at the top. Then there was a toque with mitts and an IM40 button on it. In the middle, there was envelopes, York University envelopes. There was a thing, a clearer And the women would go on and on, and the men would say things like, I don't know, there was some stuff. <laughs> so, Dr. Amen, this, uh, this is a biological difference? Oh, no question. In fact, the memory centers of the brain, it's called the hippocampus, uh, deep in the brain, significantly more active in women than in men, which is why she remembers your first kiss and every time your mother was rude to her. Um, when women get an emotional memory, they have trouble letting it go um, and uh, often remember things you wish they would have forgotten. I remember my first kiss. It, it just reminds me of what happened to to Lawrence Summers, who was president of Harvard, where he dared say, maybe, just maybe a reason that women uh, don't dominate the way men do in the sciences might be biological. And he got drummed out of Harvard just for saying that. Well, he did, but it was the, but I think it was the wrong message that they weren't perhaps as good or as competent. Their brains in that particular area of the brain are just as strong, but they're more biased to relationship issues. And so they're more likely to go into professions where they want to interact with people. Interesting. Thank you, Dr. Amen.